I'm Shannon Weber with the Bay Area Perinatal Aid Center, talking with Dr. Bob Grant, who is a principal investigator in the IPREX studies. And we're going to talk to you today a little bit about what we know about transgender women as it relates to PrEP. So give me first a brief overview of IPREX and IPREX LA. So these were two studies that were focusing on uh, the safety and uh, effectiveness of pre-exposure prophylaxis, or using a prevention pill to prevent the acquisition of HIV. We did the studies with uh, sponsorship from the National Institutes of Health. Um, Gilead provided drug but did not fund them. And uh, the studies were conducted between 2007 and 2010 uh, in uh, 11 sites around the world, including Thailand, South Africa, Brazil, Peru, uh, Ecuador, and the United States. And uh, we showed that the uh, PrEP as a prevention strategy was effective and safe. And what do we know from the IPREX studies specifically about transgender women? Well, there were um, uh, 366 participants in our study who uh, either described their current gender as woman or uh, said they were trans or were using feminizing hormones. So mm -hmm. that was 13% of our overall cohort, which was approximately 2,000. So uh, from that experience, we can say that um, that uh, that women, transgender women, were uh, willing to use PrEP and uh, did use it, but the overall level of consistent adherence to PrEP was less, and we saw that in particular in the open label extension, mm -hmm. where um, overall drug exposure or adherence um, was less in the transgender women. Mm -hmm. So many transgender women express concerns about the potential interactions between PrEP and hormones. Do you have a response to that? Well, um, we, we know that efficacy in women in the Partners PrEP study that was done in Africa was not different among women using um, uh, female hormones for contraception versus women who were not using female hormones, mm -hmm. so that's encouraging. We also know that there was no interactions between tenofovir, one of the components of Truvada, and uh, oral contraception. But we do not yet have specific studies of the drug-drug interactions between emtricitabines and female hormones or uh, interactions in trans women who are using hormones for uh, feminization. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like one piece of data that you would like to know more about as it relates to PrEP and trans women. Are, is there other data that we need or would like to know about trans women and PrEP? Oh, I think it's very important that we do studies that um, involve trans women to find better ways to offer PrEP, better ways to inform trans women's choice about PrEP, and better ways to promote adherence among people, among trans women who choose PrEP as a prevention strategy. Mm -hmm. So I think we need studies uh, of two types, one focusing on how best to offer PrEP and promote adherence, and another set of studies looking specifically at the interactions between PrEP drugs mm -hmm. and female sex hormones used for um, feminization by trans women. Mm -hmm. So help me have a little bit of context, historical and cultural context. You said the IPREX study was from 2007 to 2010. So when you were designing the study many years before that, what was it like to include trans women in the study design? Well, we wanted to, in uh, well, the, the IPREX study was designed in 2004. Mm -hmm. um, we actually were not able to launch it until 2007 because there was extensive review required in all of our six different countries around the world. Um, you know, at that time, trans women were um, uh, just beginning to identify themselves as being very, very separate from uh, men who have sex with men, and, uh, you know, we wanted to be sure to include as broad uh, a diversity of people along the gender spectrum as possible. Uh, so uh, we included trans women with uh, men who have sex with men. Mm -hmm. uh, but it became clear very early in the development of our protocol that uh, trans women needed to be regarded as a separate group, and uh, we acknowledged that by changing the name of the study in Brazil. Um, our study was called Chemoprophylaxis for HIV Prevention in Men mm -hmm. initially, and we changed the name of the study to be uh, for prevention in men and transgender women. Mm -hmm. uh, just to be clear that, that we recognize that transgender women are different from men who have sex with men. It's a different group, having different needs. Mm -hmm. So we learn a lot now through um, PrEP rollout, and if you were to design a study now, how would you do it differently as it relates to trans women? 
Well, I think whenever possible, uh, trans women would be studied separately from men who have sex with men. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, particularly important in countries where trans women are going to different clinics than um, clinics that, that are popular among gay men and bisexual men. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think also doing separate studies whenever possible in trans women also allows us to acknowledge their uh, special assets as well as their special needs in terms of being able to respond to uh, opportunities to protect themselves from HIV. So whenever possible we would do them at separate studies but you know from the beginning uh, I had the sense that if, if we did not include trans women in our studies they would never be studied. Mm -hmm. and so uh, you know I think uh, in my current round of PrEP studies, um, uh, we still have men who have sex with men uh, uh, combined with trans women in the same study. Um, and and it's, it's because I was not convinced that um, we would be able to get funding for a separate trans woman study. Mm -hmm. um, I think at the very least we would be analyzing the experience of trans women separately from right. the uh, experience of men who have sex with men so that we're very clear about what we know about trans women and how little or how much we know. And uh, we're doing this with IPREX data as well. Uh, we were preparing a paper with the UCSF uh, Center for Excellence in Transgender Health uh, that will really highlight what we know and what we don't know mm, about uh, trans women from the IPREX study originally and from the IPREX OA study that came later. I've also heard you talk about um, the inclusion of trans women in leadership and community feedback in designing study design. Well, this is really essential. We need uh, trans women to be investigators of studies and to be involved in the development mm -hmm. of protocols. We did extensive consultation in the preparation of our uh, IPREX studies, but really there's no substitute for, uh, we really need trans women to be leading these studies mm -hmm. and being on the protocol teams. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for all you've done in mm -hmm. the prevention field, and particularly people are so grateful to you for helping reshape our language about how we talk about us and them and being more inclusive, and I think that this is another step in that direction, so thank you. Well, thank you, Shannon, mm -hmm. for your interest mm -hmm. and for helping get the word out. Mm -hmm.